fans, AIOs, controllers, LED strips, all types of stuff into your motherboard if it only has one or none USB 2.0 slots on the board itself. Now, a lot of ITX motherboards only have one USB 2.0 um, header and that will probably be enough to get away with the most simplest way to convert things over into it and get everything plugged in now for some reason we're just going to take things to the extreme because i've figured out how to do it and i've actually done it in person and have it working if you needed to plug so many things into a motherboard that you had to use that 2.0 and maybe another hub of some type or just use your usb 3.0 header that you have to convert down to a hub to convert everything into your 2.0s to convert it into your motherboard, there's a way to do that too, and we're gonna talk about it today. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the video I released, which was the NZXT H200i um, ITX review. I mentioned running into this problem on my build because my fans, my LED strips, the smart controller itself, um, and then the AIO that has its own um, software and RGB itself, all wants to have a USB 2.0 if it can for itself to plug into the motherboard. Some of it will plug together. You can get rid of one of those and plug the fans and the LEDs together. But with the smart controller and also the AIO, those all want to work with their own USB 2.0 header, internal header, on the motherboard. And like I said, my board only has one. So there's one quick way we can fix that. The first thing we would do is obviously we'd take a look at the motherboard itself. So the motherboard, like I said, only has one 2.0 header. It's right here on the board down at the bottom. And then, of course, we have a few things that are also helpful. We have our sound over here. We have a fan header over here. Fan header hiding right here. We have like a debug. We have our USB 3.0. We have two or two SATAs here and two SATAs here. Obviously, you know, 16 eggs are two DIMMs for our memory. 24 pin, 8 pin, USB 3.1 type C, adjustable RGB header, and then our front I.O. panel. But that's really it. There's not a lot of other things on this board. Now, some of the newer ones do have two USB 2.0s, but even if you would need, once again, three or four, then those are not going to be enough to plug everything in. So what you would want to first do is probably pick up this right here. This is the NZXT internal USB hub controller. Now, what this is going to do is going to allow you to plug a bunch of devices into it, and all of them are going to run out through this gray slot straight into the USB 2.0 header that you have on your motherboard. So let's say that this slot here could be your um, all-in-one liquid cooler. This could be your RGB fans. This could be your LED strips. And then there's even two USB 2.0 ports that we can use in a second in a different way to convert. Um, and if you had more things that you would need to plug into this one hub right here, in fact, we'll jump ahead just a small amount. If you had, let's say, one more device that needed to be plugged in, but obviously it would want another 2.0 internal plug-in, we can use this and actually just buy this adapter right here. It's a USB 2.0 IDC5 male into a USB type A. And that type A is what you would use right here on this board. So you could actually plug one of them in, and it, and it looks like it's not enough. It's only got five, but it actually it'll pretty much read because most only will use the five on their 2.0s. Not all of them will need the other four. So if you needed two more of those, you could do that and plug actually more devices into the hub itself. Don't worry, I'll have everything absolutely linked down below in the description so you can check out the links, figure out exactly what you need for your, your system. So if that's all you needed because you have one USB 2.0, then this is all you would need. But let's take things to the absolute extreme. Now I've tested it and I've worked it out um, and I've purchased the cables just to see if I could do it. And it is a mess, but it works. Let's say you have to run something specifically, like it won't run through the hub, so it has to have its own cable going to that one slot. So then you cannot use your USB 2.0 on your motherboard. Or I don't think there's a board out there that exists, but maybe there is, or maybe the, maybe the port died. But let's say the only USB 2.0 on your board broke or you do not have a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. Let's say that that's a thing. I don't think it is, but let's say it is. How would you get everything to work? Well, we're going to have to assume that you still have a USB 3.0 header on your motherboard. And most boards have that or even have a couple. So the first thing you'd have to do is buy one of these, which is a 19 pin USB 3.0 female to a nine pin USB 2.0 male. Now, what this will do is you'll plug this part right here into the actual 3.0 on your motherboard. And then that is going to down convert to a USB 2.0. Now, this is the male side of the USB 2.0, and that would plug into the female side of the NZXT internal that would plug into the board itself. And that's how you would down convert from 3.0 into 2.0, and that would make the hub active. That way you could start plugging everything into the board and all you'd have to do is down convert. And now you're probably thinking, well, that's not that complicated. That's just one thing you have to down convert from your board 
to get the hub to work if you had to run the NZXT hub into a 3.0 header on your board. Well, the one reason this starts to get a slightly more complicated now is, well, let's say that your machine, the actual chassis, has USB 3.0 headers on the front. Now, typically, you would have used that USB 3.0 header on the board, but now you cannot. So now we need to actually convert that as well. So you would need this one, which is a USB 3.0 20-pin male to a female USB 2.0 9-pin. So you would plug that USB 3.0 that would be controlling your front IO on your chassis into this side of the hub or of this converter. And then that would plug into this part where obviously it would convert into the 2.0 side that would plug into the hub. Now, stay with me here on this. So we're down converting here on your 3.0 down to 2.0. And that is how everything's gonna be read from your, on your computer. Now this one has your front IO that has been down converted from 3.0 to 2.0 with that connector we just showed and then you have two more left so now this is let's say this is your AIO and let's say that this one is your smart control unit or LED strips but let's say you still have fans to plug in this is where this USB would be used and where you would buy this adapter cable to convert the 2.0 of your fans right here into an actual USB 2.0 type A and then that type A would plug into one of these slots and you'd still have actually an empty one open so that isn't the most ridiculous situation where you would need to convert and move across things and have everything plugged into one hub, like forwards and backwards and sideways, to get them all to work through one USB 3.0 because you're converting to it. And that's about as extreme as it could get. And like I said, as an example, you know, the NZXT Hue, that needs to be plugged into a 2.0. You know, the Krakens or almost any AIO on the market, if it has RGB or some kind of controllable software is going to need a 2.0 so you can run into ways you would need lots of different 2.0 headers that's about it even thermal take ring fans those all want to plug in they have their own hub um, that they would all plug into i think you can get six fans into one of these and you might even be able to daisy chain them together these hubs but if you couldn't or if you needed to plug multiple in and you didn't have enough 2.0 ports you know you'd start here with the nzxt hub but then if you had to do some crazy nonsense, you could buy all of these different adapters and you could get all of this to work. And the only reason I know that this works is I've done it. It is actually physically working in my system right now. And it looks a little bit like this chaos, but all these different devices all work together and they all do plug in and they all do work and still read and function um, the exact same as you would expect them to if they were just all plugged into their own very um, their very own 2.0 hubs. So um, kind of a crazy way to get around this, kind of a crazy way to plug everything in, but it does work um, if your board only has one 2.0 or if for some reason it doesn't have any at all. But that's it. Everything is down below in the description. If you have any comments, obviously drop one down below. Leave a like on the video if this helped you out and subscribe for more future content. And I'll see all of you guys in the next video.